The Osmo Pocket 3 has quickly become one of the hottest items in 2024, and you guys want to see more footage from this thing. Now, I made a video last week uh, taking this little camera with me to Mexico for a workshop, but you guys wanted to see more footage from a vlogger's perspective. So I'm doing just that. I'm here in Atlanta at the zoo. I'm going to bring this little camera along throughout the zoo and test out how it performs as if I was a vlogger. Um, it's a pretty overcast and slightly rainy and dreary day. So this will give you a really good opportunity to see how this camera performs in a bunch of different scenarios. Right now I'm using active track or face track if you will and I'm very surprised because it works very very well and it's very beneficial for if you're vlogging. I don't necessarily have to worry about if the camera is keeping me completely in focus because the camera is doing that automatically. That's a big, big plus for vloggers because a lot of times, uh, especially when you're doing these like selfie talking heads, you may be interacting with a bunch of stuff going on around you and not necessarily looking at the framing or composition of your shot. Big, big plus for DJI interweaving this into the inner workings of this camera for me to just be able to walk however I want to, knowing that I'm always going to be the priority focus on the screen. Now, some of you guys picked up in my first video with the Osmo that my motion blur did not exactly look normal. And you're exactly right because the Osmo Pocket has two different uh, systems for exposing your image properly. Obviously you have manual and you have auto. If you're set to auto, the camera will automatically adjust your shutter speed to compensate for different light. As you can see right now, I'm in a very bright spot. And if I go into here, it's gonna expose for my face being a little bit darker. And obviously it's adjusting my shutter speed to do just that. Now, once it's adjusting the shutter speed like this, my motion blur, uh, me manually setting my motion blur to stay consistent where it needs to be, which is double my frame rate, all of that goes away. So some of you guys did pick up in the last video that some of my shots didn't have normal looking motion blur and that's exactly why. Now, how can you uh, remedy this? You can get ND filters. Now, I, at the time of filming, when I took this camera to Mexico, I didn't have ND filters and I actually still don't have them yet. So I'm waiting on them from Amazon, but ND filters will help kind of expose your image so you can keep your natural looking motion blur so you won't see that kind of screen tearing. But that's just a little small explanation as to why some shots looked a little bit more jittery than others in the last video. By now, it's pretty obvious that I'm in love with the Osmo Pocket 3. And that's saying a lot because I'm very picky about camera selection. Obviously, I film and edit on a daily basis. This is my full-time job. This is what I do every single day, day in and day out. So for me to like a little small pocket camera that honestly rivals and compares very closely to my cinema cameras that are well into the five, six, seven thousand dollar range is very impressive. Answering the question on this video of whether or not this is a good vlogging camera, I think it's a very solid vlogging camera and I think that this is actually what DJI intended for this camera to be for. It's obviously intended for content creation. The ability for you to switch the camera from horizontal to vertical aspect ratios, the ability for you to switch the camera around with the click of a button so that you can record in selfie mode, the low light mode, the, there's just so, they're obviously gearing this toward people that are out creating content. I will say that there are some very small things that I talked about in this video 
that make this not a 10 out of 10, but I will follow it up with, with saying that this is definitely like a 9.6 out of 10 for me. The one thing that I think is the most clunky of this camera is the auto slash manual exposure menu. And it's just very difficult to use the ISO scroll wheel. And to my knowledge, at least, maybe this is some user error and I'm not doing it properly, but to my knowledge, when I'm recording in manual exposure, I set my shutter speed based on whatever my frame rate is. And for most of the stuff that you guys have seen so far, everything's been recorded in 4K 60, which means that I need to have a shutter speed of one over 120 or one over 125. And obviously that means that I need to adjust my ISO and the little scrolly mechanism to adjust your ISO is very finicky. I have to do it with my finger on the screen. There's no like knob or anything where I can just turn it or click it. And sometimes I'll set the right ISO and then it'll switch up a couple. It's a very clunky system and ultimately when I'm vlogging or out in public using this camera, I'm not adjusting those settings and I don't even think you can adjust those settings while you're recording a clip anyways. But again, is this camera geared towards like professional videographers like myself that really, really care about that type of stuff? I don't really think so. I think it's more so for the novice user, the typical content creator that doesn't care about shutter speed and, and frame rates and all that type of stuff. They just care that their content ultimately looks really, really good. The only other downside that just knocks off a couple of decimal points off of this camera is it's not waterproof. And that's something that I didn't talk about in the video, but it is something that happened um, and I noticed while I was recording, if you remember at the very beginning of the video, I told you it was a very rainy and dreary day when we were at the zoo. There was a lot of puddles, it was misting a lot throughout the day, so I kept finding myself having to wipe the camera off because DJI makes it very well known that the camera is not waterproof. And that in itself is something where I feel like it could have been. I don't, I'm not an engineer, I'm not, I don't understand all the inner workings of a camera and what they have to do to make sure that it's waterproof, but I do know that DJI makes their gimbals waterproof to a certain extent. I know that they make their drones waterproof to a certain extent, and they also have action cameras which are waterproof to a certain depth. So they have the technology to do it, but maybe it was a limitation and like a, something had to give to keep the camera as small as it possibly could be. But again, when you're out working with this camera, this for most people won't be a camera that they're using in uh, inside or in a controlled environment. This is something where I feel like a lot of people are gonna be using out in public and just having that, that safety net, that peace of mind, knowing that the camera can get wet um, is a, would be a positive, but to be completely honest, my little Osmo Pocket got completely drenched on that film day and I just kept wiping it clean with my shirt ever so often and I don't have any problems with it yet, but that's not to say that I won't see some problems from it down the line. So those couple of little things are like the only negatives that I have. Otherwise, I feel like this is a really good option for vlogging. If you're trying to get into content creation and you don't want to drop thousands and thousands of dollars on a camera, a lens, a tripod, a microphone, all these different aspects to get you up and running. I think this is the best camera right now on the market that you can possibly buy. If you have any other questions about the Osmo Pocket 3, things that I have not covered quite yet, things that you wanna see more of, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you're not already, head over to Instagram and give me a follow over there. I post a lot of short form content um, that I don't post over here on YouTube, so definitely make sure you're getting best of both worlds. Finally, I also do have to promote my apparel line that started at the beginning of February. Um, our Alpha line has 55 products that are geared towards photographers, videographers, and creatives. This is actually one of our hoodies right here. And I would love if you guys went over there and checked everything out. And at the time of recording this, everything is 15% off. So head over there and check out some apparel if that seems like something you want to do. And if nothing else, I'll see you guys in the next video. So, 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 so,